I'm not affiliated with this table. Oh, good evening, everyone. So my name is Sulman, and I'm an independent security researcher. So let's go get started from my background. So already Sam told you about it. So you probably have read it. And I'm an independent security researcher. I'm a final student. Mike's not working. Mike's not working. Sam, the, the wearable mic you just blew into is working. The mic he is holding is not. Okay. I'm sure both are working. Yeah. Okay, hold the stereo sound. Right? We have the technology. <laughs> Just keep you put, down, right, put down that one, Bill. You want one microphone. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you in stereo. So, so you can hear me, Adam. Yeah. No, look, I think. I'm sure this is better. Yeah, Just uh, speak straight into the mic. All right. Oh, that's yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Sam already told you about my background, so let's get started with the bug hunting techniques. That <coughs> Actually, I'm a final year student. I'm studying uh, computer forensic and security from Leeds University. Uh, and uh, anyway, let's get started if you already have already. So, so overview, um, I'm going to talk about a session hijacking, uh, hacking Huawei accounts, into remote code execution, account target takeover in Cisco, uh, Password validation bypass in a BlackBerry, post message with vulnerability, and subdomain takeover, and OX token stealing. So we'll start from the session hijacking. Okay, so I have reported this vulnerability to the top organization, including Oracle, Shopify, iCloud, SourceForge, and so on. The, the developer actually did a mistake. What they do, actually, the, log the, uh, the logout function is not properly implemented in most of the web applications. What they actually do, the logout function does not destroy a cookie from the backend server. They actually destroy a cookie from the frontend server, which is a uh, frontend system uh, from the victim browser. If the cookie is still valid from the backend server, anyone having an uh, attacker having a cookie can validate the cookie from the backend server and can portion every victim. So now, do what actually they do mistakes? They destroy cookies from the front, uh, front side, from the user browser, not from the backend server. And attacker can easily uh, get a session ID, a token, or session cookies. He can just import a session cookies in his browser. He can partitioned it after even the victim is locked out. Now the vulnerability chaining. If you have, if you if you are able to find an XSS vulnerability with session hijacking inside any website, so you are likely able to compromise any one account simply by transferring your cookies using XSS and then importing cookies with. Uh, there are two things, like the Cookies Manager, which is a Firefox add-on, you can import, export cookies through that. And that is still work for Facebook. Where is that? I'm asking. Facebook. Yes? You used to be able to hijack the session and be authenticated. It's still possible, but actually, Facebook actually has a more security, so we have to look at everything I just didn't before know we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, you can, like, uh, you can. With this add-on, you can import cookies, export cookies, and uh, you can add the cookies in order to exploit some other kind of vulnerabilities. So you can also test this kind of vulnerability inside the burp suite by simply grab the request, send it to the peer, log up from the account, and run the request. If you're able to change any detail inside the session, then you're likely able to find this. So now I'm coming to my recent research is, which is a Huawei endpoint vulnerability, I was able to compromise any account of Huawei. And always I targeted website profile section. So when I logged into my account, I went to the profile section, a profile sex, uh, setting. This is a profile setting area. I just fill up this form and simply grab the request before submitting it to the server. So the request was something like webaccount.webway.com is a personal post and it's a JSON update reg back, as you can see that. So what happened after that? When I filled this form and grabbed the request, the request was some, something like that, which is the endpoint. And uh, as you can see that it's a JSON update reg back. And after that, there is a user ID which was winnable, winnable here in this case. And there is another thing that I found inside the Huawei, which was uh, whenever you create an account, it increases. The numbers are incremented by one. <laughs> then, you, then you can hack anyone account, just me. So after that, 
I was just, uh, I just simply changed the name with the hack by Suleiman, hack by last name is Malik, and email is my own, I have created a random email just for testing purpose. So this is a random email and leave the rest. I just simply, don't go for this. All right, let's just start with it. So then I logged out from my account. I simply paste the request in the URL, and even though I have uh, no active session in my Huawei. And still, I was able to get this message. Acknowledge code one, message user, update information successfully. Like, um, it's a JSON form. It's a, it's a JSON form. Right? Then I create another, another account, and within up to the second, uh, because I actually created both accounts at the same time, and the second account was 80. So this. I grabbed the request from 80 account and tried on 79, which was previously created. And I, what I found that when I went to uh, login screen, I entered that email address, which was replaced with the uh, with the victim email. Now I'm able to log in to that account, and that's all the information was changed, replaced with my details. And uh, as you can see, that the logged in with this somebody just for clearing it. I'm going to show you a video, a live hacking video. You'll find it. Just one second. Okay. There's a live hacking video. How responsible is this while it's being live streamed on Facebook? It's all disclosed already. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. I always work uh, under responsible disclosure. All right, so so here's the video. You can watch it. Yes, all right. This is an incognito browser. As you can see, that there is no session. Even it's asking for a username and ID. And I'm going to uh, copy that code, uh, the URL, and paste it here. So you can see that the, the paste here, yeah? There is no active session. And in a few minutes, I will replace the page, and you will see the information will be changed. All right, so I got this user information successfully. Let's go to the main account now. This is the main profile. Everything has been replaced with my detail. There is no tech token was, there was no CSRF token, nothing else, no security measures, everything has been hacked. No cookie. No cookie. <laughs> <laughs> I want a cookie. So, Now I'm going to uh, confirm it that I have no active session and I'm able to hack in one account. It's still asking for this uh, web browser. Asking for uh, login. You can't replace the email from within the setting, but you can do it from outside an endpoint. So this was video anyway. So let's come to the next one, which is a remote code execution on Intel. I'm sorry about the graphic quality because I actually downloaded this image from Pentest Magazine because I have exposed this research to them, and I was able to find the actual screenshots. So hopefully you can understand it. Anyway, um, I was actually surfing the website Intel, and I found that I have an add-on webalizer, which actually tells me how many application and what type of application works in the background of this. Web server. So I found that the, uh, their site is using Angular JS. So if their site is using Angular JS, there is a possible, possibly you can find remote code execution, or you can say server-side template injection (SSTI). So I just simply went to the, the user for personal information setting. I changed my name with the first three uh, characters, which is S U L, and in curly brass is nine times nine, and the same in the last name Malik and nine times nine to test the vulnerability. Now I have to see, uh, now I have to check that where my name is reflected. If 999 is converted to 81, then it means I can execute some payloads here. So I tried it, and more, I, I, work, I was working for more than two hours and couldn't find it. Because I, wherever it reflected, 
it was like 9 times 9, 9 times 9 is not 9, 81. So finally the next day, uh, on the next day I was uh, just trying to play around with this thing and finally I came to uh, password reset uh, function area. So I just simply reset a new password and uh, I got an email on my account. The email was something like that. Dear soul, 81, well, 81. The 9 has been converted. Then I applied this code, which is a payload uh, from AJS, uh, Angular AJS. I'll get content and etc. password and everything uh, from PHP to you. And the tag was open and closed there. I just simply put in my first name. And what I got was Dear soul, and nobody started from here. All the passwords. Passwords. Inside internal passwords, everything. So I have just learned out the material. And the Malik 81 as I left it as it is. So this was my second research that I disclosed it to them. Okay. So whenever you should see that uh, if the site is using Angular JS, just try using these things. Because if you, if you play around these things, you will likely be able to find something. And something will make you more passionate about it if I tell you about how much bounty I earn. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this is the third vulnerability, which is a Cisco CSRF cross site request bridge attack. So I always target it, as I told you before, I always target it the user setting area. This time, I found that the on the back side, there was a token, as you can see that in here. This is a token value, and the server has the same value. If And token always, uh, the CSRF generator always generate a different tokens, and it's, it must be validated on the server side before. Otherwise, if the token is, does not match with the server token, it will simply uh, withdraw all inf information of failure. So I just uh, went down there and uh, checked the source code of that page, which is a user setting page, and I found that this code is being used here. So I thought that there is a 90% chance that I'm unable to hack or compromise any account here. So I just simply fill up the form with the name of Peter D'Souza, which is user ID is mine, and this is a testing ID and everything, right? Then I went to the next stage, as you can see that, which confirms that I got this ID. This is the email confirmations that I have this ID has been created on my email. Now, this is a complete uh, proof of concept code where I exploited the vulnerability. As you can see that there is a token code. The all requests will be successful if the token matches with the, to uh, with the code or uh, token, which are on the server side. So, obviously, I had to remove the code first to test it, what, what will happen. And when I remove the code, leave the values in full t uh, form, as it is, and you know what happened after that, it says see, you know, missing CSRF token, the user information is not updated because it, the CSRF token is missing. So then I, what I did, it was a very simple vulnerability. I just simply removed the full line. I removed the full line and server did not validate it. And its user information was updated, everything. In the next slide. Everything, all information is mine and it was replaced with the victim. So, all right, so and then after, if you're able to run CSRF and you're able to like change their detail, then it's very simple. If you don't know the password, for example, in some cases you don't, you don't have a password, you can simply reset the password by uh, requesting a new password section on your attacking email. And you know what happened after that? This account was created by me. And I hacked this account, and after that, the email was replaced. The blue status text is the only clause. You have to use the main entrance. Thank you. Okay, so. That's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> so this email actually upgraded the uh, account on Cisco, and it was working at that time. Then after the hacking into and replacing the email, I, I can't, uh, let's suppose I'm a victim now, and I came back to uh, the sex section because I want to I want my e email account back. So when I entered my email address here, it says you we did not recognize your email. So it means you have lost everything. All progress is lost. If you have an account uh, or if you have a credit card information or anything in your account, everything's lost because you can't back, get it back. It's not here. So and victim will no longer be able to access this account after that. If you're so this vulnerability has a high impact because victim can't recover his account. So then I went back to after resetting the password, I came back to with a new email 
and logged into my account and found that information was replaced again with the Cisco, which is a, one of the most well-known organization, and they were actually suffering from this flu. Anyway, so okay. Now we came to the next slide, which is a password validation bypass in BlackBerry. I think so. I have a video, live hacking videos for CSRF and Cisco, but it's, I think it's a 10 minute video. It's a long video. So I'm not going to play. I'll share the link on my Twitter. It's already on here. I'll share the link for my YouTube channel so you can watch a lot of live videos because these videos are proof of concept and I've submitted these videos to with the renders. And after that, I have disclosed these videos on my account. So that's. But I will show you this one anyway. So the password validation bypass. If you accidentally access someone's account, you can. You you probably have seen that if you try to change an email or other setting, you need a password before saving. <coughs> now I accidentally access someone's account, and I don't know the password, but I want to compromise his account. I want to hack his account, right? I just simply change the email and enter the wrong password, leave it blank, and it says password, uh, invalid password, or password must be insured, something like that. So what I did, actually, I simply opened the inspector, inspector element, and uh, who is this one, this line, which is actually a password section, this code is from the source code. I simply delete this code, this line, this box, and the password section, and the same thing happened. When the box is here, it will validate it. If the box is not here, it, will, it won't validate it on the server side. And I was able to hack their account as well, the BlackBerry. So, no parameters, no slash form, no validation. That's a big mistake from the developers because they don't validate on the server side. Okay, so I have tested the same thing in a, using a burp suite. As you can see that, after I have grabbed the request before uh, saving my personal detail, and I grabbed, I grabbed the request here, you can see that the farm ID password, this is uh, just a rough figures, and farm ID password, this is a new password and confirm new password. I simply remove this password line, not only the password, but I have to remove this complete parameter. So once the parameter is not there, it won't be validated on word server side. And that's it, you clear it like a hack it account. When I come back to the account, the username was changed. As you can see, the hack by 73 at gmail.com and all the information has been changed without, without knowing their password. So, so once the email change, there is a one easy step. Request a new password on your attacking email and you'll get a new password from a victim account. So this was my third or fourth, fourth research. I'm going to show you this one first. Still, you need a password for saving your security question. And this time, I'm using the verb suite. When I entered the wrong password, it gave me the error because it was validated from server side. Your security information has been successfully changed. That's it. So, Okay, so there is a post message in the bulletin. Uh, the post message is an API alternative to JSON and XSL calls address and other methods and sending the data between two origins. It was introduced in the HTML5. Now, I'm going to show you where actually the wonderful point is. When application communicate with another application, it must have a sender and receiver 
sites, yeah? So to send a massive application simply calls a post message function on the target windows. So on the target windows are post message, this is a pitfall one, and this one is a pitfall two, so let's go for pitfall one. This is a sender. So target windows are post message, hello world, and origin is this wild card, which means any. It could be a hacker. They should have something restrict, they should have something uh, same origin as same origin policy should be applied in the section because they put wildcard here. Now, an even listener can listen to, can listen from anywhere. And it could be a tiger server. Okay, so this is the first pitfall because it's sending this message to wildcard to every server. So attacker can simply input his own uh, server URL and he will be able to catch this message. Now the second pitfall is here, even handler can register on the CDC side and where we can watch it, I'll be show you in the next slide. So windows are yet add event message. The, the problem is, and the receiving side, developer actually forgot to which, uh, forgot to filter the incoming incoming by packets. So so re the receiver must validate the origin from uh, of the message with the message or origin attribute, and if the regular expression is used to validate the origin, it's important to skip the character and the dots in this code. So where's the vulnerability now in the receiving side? So this is, for example, is on exampleReceiver.com, and the code is window .add even listener message function message. And as you can see that offset.com, I put the dollar a forward slash dot test and message, right? It would not only allow the message from examplecenter.com, but also allow from www. If there is a no dot, is a a. So now attacker can register this domain and can simply do anything like they can pop up anything inside their website. But because there is a only simple problem, there is a full stop, which is a trail bar. You can find a post message in your. Uh, Chrome Dev tool, and under the source section, under the source section, if you can see that there is a is a global listener. The global listener, and down there is a message, and there are two messages. It mean, as you can see that here is a I have opened YouTube, add even listener and Windows dot even listener. So you can find this uh, even listener from there, and you have to read the code. If you see any wildcard there, just simply report that. Or if you if you are able to exploit this vulnerability, as I told you in the first slide, you can go for it. You can test it. You can just register these domains and try as much as you can. If you're engaged with the vulnerability, you probably get a higher bounty. And if you find something very common and just simply report to them, they will give you like hundred dollars. But if you engage with the vulnerability and find the impact, and if you if you have a high impact, probably you will get a three to ten thousand dollars. It depends. All right, so you can check a page is registered as a, the page has a registered message listener and which script registered by using a Chrome Dev tool, right? And a lot of third-party scripts uses a post message communicator. Most people actually have spoke to some of them, and they say is they said actually we don't use a post message, but they're using a third-party services. But they never know about you never know about if the third-party service is using a post message to communicate with another application. So. Always, if you're not using the post message service, but still you have to check each and everything in the third party side. A lot of third party scripts use a post message to communicate with the third party service, so your application might be using the post message without your knowledge. Okay, so this is only one slide for the subdomain takeover, because I'm not going much in depth. There's a, there's a lot of other details, there's three buckets and all the other things, so I'm just going from the simple way to find out how you can do that. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to search the domain, uh, the subdomains. You can use any tool, a Python based uh, tools like a sublister, DNS dumpster, it will list all the subdomains. Then you have to, you have to check it one by one using, uh, you can use some sites, NSLOOKUP or CNAME or HOST, example.com or CNAME, info.hacker1. Hacker one because the hacker one was hacked so many times because it was pointing something to unbouncespages.com. So when we check the host 
post hacker one info dot hacker dot one we got this. As you can see that the C name is pointing towards unbounceedspages.com. We went there, we were two guys, we went there, we what we did actually we tried to claim this domain on their site and once the, we, we are able we successfully claimed that domain and I, and we put some we add some contents like uh, pop-ups XSS and all these things and we were like able to get that already. So when we reported to the vendors, they actually awarded us a $2,000 bounty in the first attempt, and the second attempt, it's a $3,000 bounty, and the fourth attempt, $500 bounty. They said, like, you are just going to do it again and again. <laughs> because they were actually leaving us some spaces, they were leaving some loopholes here every time. And we were able to bypass that security. So this is very easy, like, uh, if you want to t test a subdomain of your website or your web server, just simply list all the domains check either uh, C name or if you're a bug hunter, if you want to try uh, other website, you can simply use that command, C name, host name, or just if, if you see something like a C name is pointing towards some other site or third party site, just go for that. Just go there, sign up your email, sign up your account, and try to claim that domain there. If you are if you are successfully claim that domain, you, you can do anything. You can put a fake form, you can do a social engineering techniques, in order to grab some private credentials. All right, so the last one is uh, OAuth, uh, is open and standard for authorization, commonly used as a, for internet. And most actually, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Twitter, all of them actually using the OAuth uh, for, uh, without exposing their passwords to the network. And this attack, the attacker presents uh, the victim with the URL to authentication portal that the victim trusts, like a Facebook. We have already seen in so many sites that there is a box that like uh, login with your Facebook, login with the tour. So there is this kind of when you can lies on that area. So authentication portal that victim trusts like a Facebook and by using the authentication portal to the victim secrets access token is delivered and HTTP server controlled by the attacker. Okay, so I'm going to show you how you can bypass this kind of vulnerability. You probably have seen that whenever you try to log into Google, Microsoft, you have, you're, you're likely able to see these things as well. You redirect URI and all these things, and how you, you can bypass it. So there are different ways. The two, there, these are some payloads, which is a person 2F, 2F is a forward slashes, person 5 is a backslashes, person 3 is a question mark, 23 is a hash, and 40 is a three. So the, you, can, you have to test all of them you may be fine. You, you may be fine in any of them. Like so, this is example request and uh, the example.com socialite like in client ID, redirect URI, victim.com and provide Facebook and response type is a token. All we need to steal the precious token. Once we steal the precious token, we can hack or we can log into their account very easily. So, an example request now. You have seen that. And the first request is something, as you can see that the redirect URI, because it's sending the token back to the uh, so, uh, back to this website where you came from now. So the, the website is example.com. What we did actually, we put we did person 2 app, person 2 app, which is a forward slashes, and then dot victim.com. Now what will happen, the response was some, something like that, example.com, forward slashes, dot victim.com. It means the code has sent to both domains. Now we have precious token. We can log into their account. So sometimes actually it doesn't work. The forward slashes doesn't work. You have to try the backslashes instead of forward slashes. Do person 3F or hash. Hash, as you probably know about the hash, is uh, anything that comes after the hash won't validate it on server side. Whatever is it. You can put your name after the hash. It won't be validated on server side and you'll get your web page. So you have to try each all all of these uh, symbols, there might be dollars, you can use a dollar, you can use a pound, any, any kind of symbol to test this kind of vulnerability. And, all right, so this is the last slide for, from my side. If you have any question related to any of research, anything, <laughs> share it. Yeah. Thank you. I had a question on the info dot uh, yeah. hacker one. Did you actually have access? Uh, yeah, if you go back, 
Yeah, so the canonical name. Does that mean you are also acting as info.hacker1? Or just simply the uh, unbounced pages? We went to what we did actually. After mm -hmm. when we looked for uh, their C name, and it was pointing, the C name was pointing toward unbounced pages. And when we tried to access on our port 80 in a web browser, it says nothing. It's a, the page was blind, blank, right? What we did, and we went to the unboundspages.com. On, on unboundspages.com, we tried to, uh, what we did actually, we created an account there. We it asked for a domain, subdomain, because it's a service yeah. for subdomains on it. So it asked for a subdomain, we put that subdomain, and we claimed that. We are able to, once you are able to claim that domain, you can do anything with it. So we claimed that domain. Now the hacker one company can't claim again. I have full control over this uh, subdomain now. So, okay, hacker, so you have this full control of info dot info dot hacker dot okay. one now. So the other thing that you can do is that some companies, because they have so many subdomains, the their session cookies is set to parent. Right. Which means that if you've logged in or so on, and the pages point to info dot hacker on somewhere, you're Sam. also sending the hooky. Sorry, you're. Um, uh, so the reason why I brought it up is that if the browser actually sees unbounced pages as info.hacker1, and if hacker1 sets the session cookies to parent, it means that old subdomains will receive the session cookies. And if it's pointing to info, that means that you will receive everybody's session cookies as they're pointing to you and log them. We and can you can log in as right? everyone. Yeah, we, we can compromise anyone account with, with it. Yeah, it's very simple. We can compromise anyone account if you have, if you, if you are the owner of this domain. Yeah. That's it. You can post some kind, of, you know, so you can do a social engineering technique. You can post some form, fake forms on their website, and ask for their details. Whenever they enter the details, they will be sent to your server, so you can see anything. Okay. Uh, can I ask the second question that uh, yeah. I was sort of about? Uh, can you go back to the OAuth page because I think this is awesome, right? Because that means that you can actually hack in as uh, was it the next slide? Um, you, you you can actually log in as a user. I know there was a recent vulnerability in uh, our Office three six five. Who here is using Office three six five? So okay. So OAuth vulnerability existed in Office three six five, which means anyone could log in as anyone in your organization, right? And read anyone's emails. Okay, Microsoft fixed this only, only, right? I think about seven months ago. So how long Office 365 has been in use? Okay, seven so, <laughs> um, well, there you go. Now, um, question I have here for you, uh, Suman. Obviously, you didn't say who the uh, site was. You used example of, can you disclose who it was? Uh, is it now all been? Yeah, uh, it was a hacker one. It was, this was also HackerOne themselves. Yeah. Okay. So Subdomain of HackerOne. Okay. And, and I have one more question, if you don't yeah. mind. What was the highest bounty you got? It was uh, $15,000. Oh, excellent. Okay, any more questions? Was that before oh. or after taxes? <laughs> <laughs> after the taxes, it was uh, 30000 sure, something. Sure. Yeah. 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 Can, you, can you go back to sort of, you know, the OAuth one? Can you just explain how that works, right? Because uh, the bit I'm not understanding is that... Uh, which one? The, the one you got there, right? So you basically say that the, the exploits, once you put the two four slashes, you're actually, the requests are sent to both example.com yeah. and victim.com? Yeah, exactly. We need it actually this precious code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before. Actually, we are trying to steal that code. And this code will be given to the only the, the domain that actually redirected us to their site now. So you probably have seen that some, somewhere else, like in the Instagram, you said log in with the Facebook. And on the sites, log in with the Facebook. It's very easy. It's a single sign yeah. yeah. So here, what we did actually, whenever you try to change example.com with your attacker email, it will uh, drop your uh, request. I will say that actually this is a blacklisted domain, it's not whitelisted. So what we did actually, after the .com, we put two slashes and .com, which is, uh, which is in our control, this domain. And the final response came like, the token was issued, which is here, and the final response was something like, example.com, two slashes, and .com, and it did not give any error. So it sends this code, which is a precious code, to bot, uh, bot domain. And that code is always the same? No, no, it's not always the same. No, no, so it's it's it could token. be something, it's just a token. So it's the token. It yeah, so basically, if you log in with Instagram, let's say to a, another website, I don't know, some e-commerce website, right? 
that is the token that you get, right? So basically, if you, in that URL, if you if you use this technique and you add your own site, uh, deniscruz.com, right, you will get that token. And that yeah. represents the other user. Exactly, right? exactly. Oh, okay. Yeah, a question for Chris. Hi, um, so if the callback URL is uh, is configurable only by a developer in a, in a locked dashboard, are you protected against this vulnerability? Against this one. There are very like uh, OWASP has actually given a lot of actually details about prevent this kind of attacks. Everything like whenever we actually the vendors tr uh, ask us for uh, mitigations, we take it from OWASP and send it down. Simple. <laughs> because, uh, OWASP yeah. is the best. best. Yeah. So I mean, he was just asking if you just have a whitelist of yeah, the white things, list. How to yeah, so would that be enough? Whitelist. Whitelist domain. Well, no. So um, maybe I should clarify. So. Um, I, I've built a system that, that has an OAuth integration, um, and a developer enters their callback URL into a locked dashboard. Um, so, it's so, uh, so the developer will log in with their own account, um, create an application, and they receive keys. Um, part of that process is they also enter in what their callback URL will be, and that, that's set. That can't be changed from, from the front end. Um, does that protect against vulnerabilities like this? Yeah, it can be. Yes, well, it also depends how you validate it, right? If you validate using a regex, right, yeah. uh, then there is still a vulnerability in there. So, so the callback URL is here. Right. Callback supreme So, you, every time we have a different situations, you know, if, if there is a callback that you're missing in this section, so uh, this was actually. I have replaced it. It was a Sony PlayStation side, <laughs> and and that's the swag from Sony. <laughs> so, so you can, but like it, it is when there is a callback function, you have to try the callback function. Have a like, if, if there's a callback callback function, you can try the callback function as well. But you have to check the check the impact level because every time it's not coming with the callback function. It's a you redirect you right is only once, and sometimes it, it, it comes three, sometimes it comes two. So it depends which one is actually uh, redirecting back to your web page. So you have to do that. Okay, we have time for one more question. So uh, normally all authentication requests go through HTTPS, right? Uh, this is like, you are given an example where it's HTTP colon. So from a user's point of view, it, is this still crackable from a HTTPS side? It was HTTPS. I just changed, changed it to example.com. It was a PlayStation.com. And I already so, disclosed that video on my YouTube channel, a live hacking video. So I will share the link on my Twitter uh, about my sh uh, YouTube channel, so you can watch all of, all these live hacking videos from there. You have to it to that. We have one more question. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, moving on from the award for a second, you disclosed uh, two cases whereby parameters were being validated only if the parameters were actually being set. It strikes me with my developer hat on that it's more code and more hassle to get this wrong than it is to get it right. Which makes me think that it's probably some sort of silly library that's going through and enumerating all of the parameters. Did you look for any such common library or common validation library that might be doing this? And do you, if you did, did you find anything, and do you know what they were using? Because if it is a common library, there's probably a thousand other websites out there with the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. Very good question. No, actually, I'm a bug hunter. I just try to find Bounty as soon as I can. If you go back, where is it? I'll show you. Okay, as you can see in this code, which is Cisco code, I, when I came to this section, I knew that if the token is validated from the server side, I will leave it. And if, if you give, give, give me an error, I'll just leave it. I will go for something else. 
But when I remove this code, and it still says an invalid token, even the token was not present, then I simply remove this code line to test it, what it comes and say it was hacked, simply. So I always try to try to shortcut ways to our bounty. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much, Suman. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I have only uh, two last slides remaining. So uh, first of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to our speakers uh, tonight, uh, Benji and Suleiman. Yeah, one more time. Big, big thank you to hosts for this evening, John Lewis Partnership, Rehan Audrey. Thank you very much for organizing this. As you have seen, this is the canteen of John Lewis, and they were kind enough to bake all the pizzas for us. So uh, thank you very much for the pizzas. All the slides will be available on our website in a couple of days, and the videos, as soon as uh, Sharif uploads them to YouTube, will be there soon. Okay, uh, right, a few events coming up. We are preparing a hackathon and capture the flag competition. The dates will be announced as soon as we finalize all the challenges. So please do follow us to make sure you don't miss this. Right, another big announcement. Uh, those of you who participated in the OWA Summit this year in June, there will be another OWA Summit next year in April 2018, organized by Dennis Cruz here. So it will be in the same venue, which is Centre Parks near Bedford. Uh, same format, a week of no presentations, just uh, people like us working together. Uh, so uh, yeah, make sure you register as soon as tickets uh, go up. Don't forget to. Uh, Sign up to our mailing list, Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, Slack. Right, now, most important part of the evening, beer and networking, it's happening in this place, it's called Greenwood, this is a brand new bar opposite Victoria Station, it's about five minutes walk from here, looks like this, so you recognize it, okay? So there's like a Greenwood sign here, we will be upstairs, it's a brand new big bar, so I'll see you there and we'll be buying a few drinks. Thank you very much all for coming. Thank you for everyone watching the live stream. And we'll see you in two months' time. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Sam. Sam. Thank you. 